Marines Update. I'm Petty Officer Andrew Johnson. The Navy christened its newest littoral combat ship, or LCS, the future USS Detroit October 18th. The ship is designated as LCS-7 and is named in honor of the city's deep ties to the U.S. Navy and the shipbuilding industry. Detroit is designed to operate in shallow water environments to counter challenging threats in coastal regions. As a fast, agile, and technologically advanced surface combatant, Detroit will launch and recover manned and unmanned vehicles. Modular design will allow for the addition of new and improved weapons and systems, providing extra flexibility and capabilities to support the fleet into the future. LCS-7 is the seventh ship to bear the Detroit name. Visit Navy.mil and All Hands Magazine online for more information on the LCS class of ships. Welcome to All Hands Update. These are today's headlines. The Navy's pivot to the Pacific continues. The Navy announced Wednesday that two littoral combat ships, future USS Detroit and USS Montgomery, will call San Diego home. By 2020, approximately 60% of the Navy's ships and aircraft will be based in the Pacific region. If the CNO's rapid innovation cell has its way, your detailing process will look very different in the future. The cell recently developed a prototype detailing system that resembles online employment-based social media sites. The goal is to assign sailors to jobs and commands that match their skill sets and interests. You can be a part of the CNO's rapid innovation cell. Applications for the 2016 team are being accepted through January 31st. Interested applicants must be in pay grades 04 and below, including enlisted sailors in all communities. If you are interested in applying, visit the Navy's CRIC Facebook page. Read more about what's happening around your Navy at Navy.mil.
Littoral combat ships, or LCS, serve as vital assets to the fleet and provide needed capabilities for evolving threats on the waterfront. LCS may be configured for three purposes, surface warfare, mine countermeasures, or anti-submarine warfare. These configurations provide warfighting capability directly supporting the Navy's Asia-Pacific rebalance strategy. The ships are staffed using the 3-2-1 concept, meaning three crews will rotate between two ships. One ship will be forward deployed, while the other remains stateside for workups and training. This cycle provides a persistent forward presence, which enables four ships to generate eight times the presence of a single crewed CONUS-based destroyer. These ships are capable of providing destroyer and cruiser-based naval presence for a fraction of the cost, allowing the ships to be used for more high-end missions. From the Defense Media Activity, I'm Petty Officer Tony Rosa. LCS USS Freeman is operating out of Singapore and really fits well in this area in these regional uh, countries. Uh, with their littoral waters, uh, a lot of islands in this area, a lot of shallow waters, littoral uh, combat ship, the USS Freedom is designed to operate in those waters and designed to work with those navies uh, that really do have more of the smaller ships and more of the smaller ports. USS Freedom is able to access those ports and pull in pier side uh, for a next level of engagement that we're not really able to do on this size of a ship uh, in the past with our other ships, our cruisers and destroyers. And we're making history here on this uh, deployment to Southeast Asia. Uh, the crew has handled it very well. We've give, been given a lot of different curveballs, a lot of different taskings uh, to accomplish, and a lot of lessons learned to develop. And uh, the crew has uh, done a fantastic job with it. It has not been easy uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but if it was easy, someone else would be doing it, not the U.S. Navy. Last week, uh, the Navy's Facebook account uh, had posted several uh, questions uh, from viewers and fans of the USS Freedom. And I would like to take a brief moment here to answer some of those questions. Uh, one of the first questions is, I noted the I noted the crew training when Freedom was in final days of construction. Could you briefly discuss how the crew is progressing and what you are particularly proud of concerning training a new crew on a new class of ship as well as a new style of fighting? First off, a new class of ship, a new training uh, for this ship is very unique. We have a train to qualify pipeline. That is, as we get a sailor into the program, the LCS program, they go through an extensive training uh, program. That be uh, for schoolhouse training as well as synthetic training. So when they do show up on part of the crew and on the ship, they are ready to stand their watch, uh, which is different than on other ships where they have to sit that watch as under instruction before, the, before they're qualified. But I'm extremely proud of this crew. Uh, this crew has uh, been training not only in that training qualified pipeline, uh, but as we deployed across Pacific, leaving on the 1st of March in San Diego, and came across, we've had several new sailors uh, that have trained on different watch stations that they weren't necessarily trained for prior to coming on board. That shows the flexibility uh, of our sailors uh, and their ability to adjust and adapt to the different challenges that they face on board the ship here to add flexibility to what we do out here.
at times you can kind of gauge about where you're at and you kind of get lost in the simulation a little bit and kind of act like you're on watch. But then you look at it and you realize it does kind of feel like a video game. Especially for the younger generations, we can kind of grow up on video games. Now the simulator here is, is like I said, is unlike any other. It's very uh, realistic, a lot easier to simulate bridge standing and watch standing on this particular simulator than it is to send junior personnel out to sea and put them on million dollar warships where we can uh, come here, learn, uh, make mistakes, and learn from those mistakes here so that when we do get out to our ships we can actually perform well and do our jobs uh, to the standard that the Navy expects from us. My navigator and my electronics material officer, both second tour division officers, came to me during the last off-haul period and they had gone through the training and we got underway last month with both of them having never been underway on Fort Worth standing OOD and they did a fabulous job at it. This is, uh, this is the future of bridge watch standing on minimally manned ships, absolutely. It doesn't get any better than this for simulation, that's for sure. A lot of cross training involved. Uh, it is a 40 man crew. Normally, a ship this size has 150, 200 people. So, it's a, there's a lot of work to be done on here. The, the commissioning crew and, and the work we do here will have an impact on this ship 20 years from now. These ships have the ability to operate in shallow waters other major warships can't. This is one of the most versatile, most valuable ships in the Navy. Fast, agile, and adaptable platform. Uh, we can bring in different modules to perform different missions. Underway is a lot simpler to, to manage things. You don't have to worry about manning so many spaces, getting out and checking so many things. It's all at a console or all at you know a click of a mouse button. If somebody's looking to get out of their comfort zone,
Sailors aboard littoral combat ships, or LCS, are using the Navy's newest programs to train shipboard evolutions. The training combines on-screen maintenance personnel avatars who instruct sailors in realistic environments using handheld devices that will emulate tools. This gives sailors maintenance training in both routine and potentially new ways using an approach similar to video games. Many of today's sailors grew up playing video games, and the Navy believes this interaction has become second nature, which is important to the development of this training. The computer-based training coincides with automated systems aboard LCS, and the more sailors are familiar and comfortable with maintaining and operating the ship, the more efficient and effective they become. Read more about this story on the Navy Live blog. From the Defense Media Activity, I'm Petty Officer Jen Blake. Third question, how does your ship mission differ from that of a destroyer, frigate, or other naval vessels? Well, uh, frigates, destroyers, cruisers, other surface combatants are multi-mission platforms. Uh, those multi-missions could be uh, anti-air warfare, anti-surface warfare, anti-submarine warfare. Uh, being able to conduct warfare across a wide spectrum uh, of uh, naval operations. Uh, the littoral combat ship, USS Freedom, is uh, able to do various uh, types of warfare uh, but is more focused on one type at a time in the littorals. Where those other ships will operate mainly out in the blue waters, which is in the deep ocean, we operate close into shore with fo focused mission packages. Whether that be a surface mission package to conduct anti-surface warfare, or a mine hunting package to hunt for mines, or an anti-submarine package to hunt for submarines in the littorals. So we operate close into land, an area that the U.S. Navy really hasn't been uh, operating in uh, in the recent past. USS Freedom, the first ship of its class, made a port call at Naval Base Guam as part of its eight-month deployment to the Western Pacific. Freedom is a littoral combat ship designed to work in close to coastlines in areas too shallow for other Navy vessels to go. Now the training that we've gone through has been quite extensive ashore in our uh, synthetic trainers as well as on board the ship outside of San Diego. Uh, doing the exercises, uh, have taken a lot of hard work, uh, but we're all excited as a crew to be doing this deployment, this main deployment. Freedom's crew will conduct a variety of activities while in port here in Guam, including resupply activities and community relations projects before continuing its eight-month deployment. Patrick Franklin, Naval Base, Guam. Welcome to All Hands Update. I'm Petty Officer Tyrell Morris. The Navy's newest class of surface combatant warships, littoral combat ships, fill a crucial role in the six core areas of the Navy's maritime defense strategy. Littoral combat ships, or LCSs, provide forward presence, deterrence, sea control, power projection, maritime security, humanitarian assistance, and disaster relief response. LCSs are also capable of changing primary missions via modular mission packages. Packages include surface warfare, mine countermeasures, and anti-submarine warfare. With the modular packages, LCSs are able to conduct freedom of navigation, theater security, maritime counter piracy, search and rescue, and maritime domain awareness patrol operations. For more information and a virtual tour, log on to All Hands Magazine online. Welcome to All Hands Update. I'm Petty Officer Andrew Johnson. These are your headlines from around the fleet. USS Fort Worth and USS Sampson continue to assist in the international search and recovery effort for the missing Air Asia Flight 8501. The crew of Sampson has helped recover several bodies during the search. Both ships will remain on station until their assistance is no longer needed. For more updates, check Navy.mil. Winter is here and the Navy wants to make sure you, your family, and your shipmates stay warm and safe. Prepare for the cold weather to avoid frostbite and hypothermia by wearing layered clothing, eating properly, and drinking warm liquids to stay hydrated. If you're traveling during a storm, drive slowly and carefully and keep a winter survival kit in your car. For more information, visit the Naval Safety Center website.
With the first littoral combat ship, USS Freedom, currently on its maiden deployment in the Asia-Pacific, Navy leaders recently testified before the Senate Armed Services Committee about the capabilities the platform brings to the fleet and its importance to our mission. The littoral combat ship provides our Navy with vitally important capabilities and is key to the future uh, of all naval operations. LCS, with its speed, shallow draft, and persistence, offers the ability to operate in the near land battle space. It will take us to improve our Navy's global reach further than we have today and has the flexibility to continue to improve and face upcoming threats in the future. The Navy currently has three LCSs, the USS Freedom, USS Fort Worth, and USS Independence. From the Defense Media Activity, I'm Petty Officer Alexandra Snyder. USS Freedom returned to its San Diego home port after completing its 10-month maiden deployment, marking a milestone in the Navy's littoral combat ship program. Freedom's deployment proved that the LCS can get the job done and that it is a vital multi-mission asset to the fleet. Since Freedom's return, the Navy has looked at the effects of the ship's deployment and began improving the LCS program. These include a more efficient chain of command, adding more members to the crews, and underway maintenance improvements. The changes made after Freedom's deployment are designed to improve flexibility and mission readiness in other LCSs before their deployments. The Navy's third LCS, USS Fort Worth, is scheduled to deploy later this year. Read the full story on the Navy Live blog. From the Defense Media Activity, I'm Petty Officer Ian Cotter.